Earth's oxygen. The mystery easy to take for granted. Nitimes.com. Log in. Register now. Help. Home page. Today's paper. Video. Most popular. Edition. U.S. Slash global. Search all nitimes.com. Science. World. U.S. NY. Slash region. Business. Technology. Science environment space cosmos. Health. Sports. Opinion. Arts. Style. Travel. Jobs. Rate real estate. Autos. Matter. Earth oxygen. The mystery easy to take for granted. Chong W. Lee slash the New York Times. The mat of blue-green algae in China. Cyanobacteria like this were some of the first organisms on Earth to produce oxygen as a waste product of photosynthesis. By Carl Simmer. Published, October 3, 2013. To Donald E. Canfield, there's something astonishing in every breath we take. People take oxygen for granted because it's just there and we breathe it all the time, said Dr. Canfield, a geochemist at the University of Southern Denmark. But we have the only planet we know of anywhere that has oxygen on it. More matter columns. Matter, in fragmented forests, rapid mammal extinction September 27, 2013. Matter, new approach to explaining evolution's Big Bang September 20, 2013. Matter, the far-flung possibility for the origin of life September 17, 2013. Connect with us on social media. At time audience on Twitter. Science reporters and editors on Twitter. Like the Science Desk on Facebook. Enlarge this image. Earl Wilson slash the New York Times. Carl Simmer. What's even more astonishing is that Earth started out with an oxygen-free atmosphere. It took billions of years before there was enough of the element to keep animals like us alive. Although scientists have been struggling for decades to reconstruct the rise of oxygen, they're still making fundamental discoveries. In just the past two weeks, for example, Dr. Canfield and his colleagues have published a pair of studies that provide significant clues about some of the most important chapters in oxygen's history. They're finding that our weirdly oxygen-rich atmosphere is the result of a complicated dance of geology and biology. To study the ancient atmosphere, geochemists examine the chemical fingerprints left behind on rocks. Some rocks contain molecules that could have only formed in the presence of oxygen. The more of those molecules geochemists find in a rock, the more oxygen must have been in the atmosphere at the time. Then they look at the oldest rocks on Earth. They find no trace of oxygen in the atmosphere. Instead, their research indicates Earth's primordial air was made up mostly of carbon dioxide, methane and nitrogen. The sun's rays created some free oxygen by splitting it off from carbon dioxide and other molecules. But the oxygen disappeared almost as soon as it was formed. That's because oxygen is an enormously friendly element, forming bonds with a wide range of molecules. It attached to the iron in rocks. For example, creating rust. It joined with the hydrogen spewed out from volcanoes to form hydrogen peroxide and other compounds. Our planet, in other words, was a giant oxygen vacuum in its early years. That changed by 3 billion years ago. In the September 26th issue of Nature, Dr. Canfield and his colleagues reported the fingerprints of oxygen in rocks from that time period. They estimate that the atmosphere 3 billion years ago had only 0.03% of today's oxygen levels. That may not sound like much, but it marked a huge shift in Earth's chemistry. Sunlight alone couldn't have put that much oxygen in the atmosphere. Only life could. By 3 billion years ago, some microbes had evolved the ability to carry out photosynthesis. Floating at the surface of the ocean, they used energy from sunlight to grow on carbon dioxide and water. They gave off oxygen as waste. Much of the oxygen released by these photosynthetic microbes was sucked out of the atmosphere by Earth's vacuum. It reacted with hydrogen from volcanoes, for example. When microbes died, oxygen reacted with their carbon molecules. But a tiny amount of oxygen remained behind because some of the organic matter from the dead microbes sank from the surface of the ocean to the sea floor, where oxygen couldn't react with it. The oxygen remained in the air. Oxygen remained fairly scarce for the next few hundred million years. But during that time, Earth's vacuum was getting weak. The planet was cooling, and so its volcanoes spewed less hydrogen into the atmosphere to suck up oxygen. In his forthcoming 